This conference will now be recorded. God bless you. And good morning. So we greet you in this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. And we give honor to the Spirit who is the head of our life. Amen. We thank God for another day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for rest last night and early morning. He touched us to see another day. We thank God that we're able to gather on our this day is set aside to study the word of God, our church school day, and we want to give honor to all to whom honor is due. To our superintendent of Sunday school, uh, church school, Sister Catherine Hill, and we solicit uh, prayers for her and her family. Amen. As they have gone through some bereavement, uh, we ask that you just continue to lift her up in prayer. Uh, to our Christian education director, Sister Brenda Foreman, to all the facilitators who work along with us, Sister Johnny uh, Durant Sparks, and our evangelist Cooper. Actually, she would normally come and uh, share and teach this morning, but uh, she's in ministry. She's doing ministry. Uh, so we uh, stepped in and filled in the gap. Amen. As the pastor and to our mother, uh, Austin, amen. We always keep her in prayer, amen, uh, because we know that she's praying for us. Let's look to the Lord this morning. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you once again, to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, that workmen that need to not be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of God. We thank you for uh, your only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, who died, that we might all have a right to the tree of life. Thank you. That you sits at your right hand, make an intercessor for us right now. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that brings back to our remembrance all things, all things whatsoever you have shown us and taught us. The Holy Spirit that guides us and your Holy Spirit that keeps us. The uh, Holy Spirit that brings about understanding. And you said in your word, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, but in all I get, get understanding. So, Lord, we thank you for this day. We actually thank you for those that's on the line this morning, uh, hungry for the word of God. And I pray that you bring us together. I know that we are in various homes and various locations, but by your power and by your spirit, you're able to bring us together uh, on one place, on one, uh, under one banner of Christian love. We ask that you will guide us. Forgive us our sins and all our shortcomings. Create with us, O oh God, a clean heart and renew the right spirit. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. We thank you, O oh God. Let something be said or done that will lift up our spirit, become fruitful in the life of our living. In Jesus' name we pray. Help me, Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you today. And so as we are coming down, amen, we have come through. When we look at our Sunday school lesson book, you see how quickly time has uh transition you see time is filled this hymn i always say time is filled with swift transition it was just a couple of it seemed as though a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago that we started reading a book amen it was in uh september and now we're coming at the end of june and we have a, a few july about eight more classes or so and then we'll be done with this book amen i pray there's been a blessing and study uh, in our understanding uh, this morning we're talking about god offers deliverance amen and we're in the book of isaiah 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 god off that prophet that 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 major prophet uh, isaiah uh, he wrote the most out of all old testament uh, writings uh concerning uh christ uh we said what's the difference between a major prophet and a minor prophet uh there's uh, the main difference is that one wrote more than the other but they all were god's messengers with god's message that's the only difference one uh wrote more than the other we have five major books of prophecy five major books of prophecy we have uh isaiah jeremiah lamentations uh, ezekiel and daniel so we have five major books of prophecy and four major prophets amen so isaiah jeremiah uh ezekiel and daniel 
the book of lamentation is not a prophet it's just a continuation it's been attributed to jeremiah and the continuation of his writing book of lamentation so in that old testament section uh but you know even in the book of isaiah they they many scholars feel that that book is really a, the bible within itself because it talks about uh the uh the past history of the children of Israel, you find much readings there, much writings in that book. It really, a matter of fact, when you look at Isaiah, there's 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah. And so when I say they call that a mini Bible because of all the scriptures that have been compiled together, there's 66 books in the Bible. Amen. So you find 66 chapters in Isaiah, 66 books in the Bible. And, and, and also Isaiah wrote the most concerning the, the birth, the life, the ministry, crucifixion, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so you'll find almost everything that you want to know about the entire scripture, it was revealed through the prophet Isaiah. Amen. God's humble servant who have been called uh, to, to, to declare what thus saith the Lord. Amen. To the people of Israel. Mostly he dealt with the, uh, the, the southern kingdom. Uh, tribe of Judah. Uh, a lot of times uh, he gave warnings. He, he gave also words of prophetic words of, uh, of judgment. Uh, he gave words of God's, uh, what God had desired and planned for his people uh, to come to pass. And so uh, even in our lesson today, we find that uh, the, the tribe of, uh, first of all, the tribe of the northern tribe, uh, the 10 tribes, you know, they were divided, 10 tribes to the north and ten two tribes to the south, the 12 tribes. And, you know, the 10 tribes had, had gone into total uh, apostasy. That means they had just backslid into the point that they were ultimately destroyed. Amen. They were taken into captivity and uh, dismantled Samaria, the capital of the northern kingdom. Uh, you know, they just continue. You know, most of the, the kings of the northern kingdom were wicked kings. Uh, and so, you know, after the uh, 40 years of, of, of King Saul and 40 years of David, who is the uh, model king of in, in Israel, David has always been the model king uh, of Israel. Uh, and then Jesus Christ is the eternal king. You know, when Christ promised David that he'll have a, a son, a seed that will sit on his throne forever eternal so jesus christ is the uh eternal king of israel all right and his kingdom is the eternal kingdom and he did as we were seeing the other night he did he did come christ jesus was born through the lineage of the line of david and so we are grateful for that uh 40 years they were united together that's what i was trying to say there was a, a united kingdom 40 years of the saul 40 years under David, 40 years under Solomon, that's uh, David's son. But after that, they uh, uh, was became a divided kingdom. God saw that uh, they would uh, not be able to obey his word, amen. And they were uh, smitten with idolatry, amen. When you mingle with other nations and, and God forewarned them, this is nothing new. He showed them, he, he warned them when he, uh, was taking them into the land of promise in the days of Moses. And so this was, and in, in, in they, many of the people said, oh, we're going to obey God. But your blessing is, is based on obedience to God. And so uh, disobedience will bring about curses. Disobedience will bring about chastisement. Uh, disobedience will bring about, uh, I would say, chastening and chastisement. Disobedience will bring about uh, uh, everything destruction yeah everything that god said uh would happen you can read in uh the book of uh deuteronomy uh god brought about the 25th chapter 26th chapter chapter 31 the deuteronomy every the, the lord for already forewarned the ch his children the children the nation of israel when you obey me i'm going to continue to bless you i'm going to keep your uh, enemies at bay i'm going to bless your land uh, you'll be a productive land, you'll be a, be a peculiar people, but disobedience uh, will cause God to allow his people uh, to be even taken into captivity. Uh, 
and uh, and, there, and if you notice the history of the children of Israel, they would be taken into captivity. Uh, they would cry out to the Lord as if they was in bondage, you know, slavery. You know, why is it that when we get in a predicament that we can't even help ourselves, that's when we can we cry out to the Lord, Amen. And some people have to get like that. Sad to say, but true. God have to uh, bring us to a point of or His people, or people, mankind, to a point to such a low condition that you you can't help you, and nobody else can help you. So then, now the only thing you can do is look to the Lord. Uh, the author and the finisher of the faith. So if we look in the book of Judges, I'm just doing an overview before we go into the land, just to give you an idea how there was repetition. God would bless them, he would restore them, they would uh, be sinful, disobedient, and God would allow the enemy to overtake them. They would, you know, they had a cycle of doing this. And so even now, uh, the, the, North, the Southern Kingdom, Judah, uh, they had been, because of disobedience, disobedience and idolatry, uh, they were taken into captivity in Babylon. We know that it was prophesied for the 70 years, amen, that they would be in captivity. Uh, but even in the midst of all that, we ought to rejoice because God keeps his promise. Uh, uh, he has made some promises, he made some covenants, a covenant, a covenant, a formal Solomon a solemn and binding agreement that's all it is a written agreement or promise under the seal between two or more parties especially for the performance of some action that's what a covenant is god had made an agreement he made it a promise and he and it's binding amen and i was shared even on the other day we are blessed and we don't even have nothing to do with it <laughs> you know so there's some agreements there's some covenants there's some promises that God has made with our foreparents, and we just happen to be the recipients of some promises. I know I am. Now, I wasn't in the conversation when God made the, uh, uh, the, the agreement, amen, uh, but as a child of God, amen, even in our uh, historical uh, family lineage, amen, you don't know how God's going to bless you, but uh, because of his promise that he made with the Abraham covenant and this today we're going to look at uh the abrahamic covenant amen that he made with abraham it really focuses on abraham that he's able to restore and keep his promise he's able to revive his promise with his people in spite of their wicked ways in spite of their sinful ways when they begin to turn and uh, uh look to the lord again uh, whether they were in bondage they was in captivity most in babylon god sends a word aren't you glad for a word uh we used to sing a song that uh we don't sing much it say, i hope it don't be this way i hope it don't be this way always i hope it don't be this way i'm looking for a better day i hope it don't be this way always so and even in their present circumstance or situation god sent the prophet isaiah to, to, to declare and to decree that he is going to deliver, amen. He's going to deliver uh, his people, amen, out of their present circumstance and their present condition. So today we're looking in the book of Isaiah. We have our book open. Uh, we're gonna we read now the NIV, the New International Version, Isaiah chapter fifty-one. We're looking at verses one through eight. So if we had two readers this morning, uh, can you have one to read from verses one down through four and another reading, reader to read from verses five through eight. Uh, we know that we have some activities going on uh, this morning. We wanna recognize all our clergy, all our officers. Uh, we wanna recognize uh, uh, all the, uh, disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we know that we may be small in number and there are some times where we have these things going on at the same time. But nevertheless, we want the word of God to go forward with power. So can I have two readers this morning? God bless. Good morning. Listen God to bless me. You, Sir Jonathan. Yeah. Good, good, good morning again. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, 
and to Sarah who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him and he made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her des deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people, hear me, my nation. Instructions will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. Okay, thank you. Can I get another? Good morning. Um, my righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way, and my arm will bring justice to the nations. The Allens will look to me and wait and hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and the inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness mm. will never fail. Hear me, you who know what is right. You people who have given my instructions to heart, do not fear the reproach of mere mortals or be terrified by their insults. For the morph will eat up them, um, will eat them up like a garment. The worm will devour them like wool, but my righteousness will last forever, my salvation through all generations. God bless you. And our golden text or key verse says, listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, and who seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry, quarry, quarry from which you were hewn, Isaiah 51 and 1. I uh, just want to give you a few uh, uh, introductory uh, notes, and then we're going to uh, look at our, our uh, scriptures. We ask that you would... Uh, Unmute, uh, mute yourself after you. Okay, we're muted. Okay. Uh, introductory, uh, Isaiah 51. Uh, really, this lesson is a word of encouragement. It's a word of comfort, and it's a word of promise restoration uh, from God the Father. Uh, although in captivity, the faithful in Babylon were exhorted to remember uh, their heritage by looking back to uh, Abraham, your father, and Sarah, who gave birth to you. They gave birth to a nation. Um, this would remind the Jewish captives that their nation was born out of God's eternal covenant with Abraham. Amen. We're going to take a look at that, that a covenant that uh, God made with Abraham, a promise of blessings that they could cling to during their present suffering. The promise of future restoration was a reminder that God will remember his covenant. So God is faithful to his covenant. God is faithful to his promises that he has made, amen. And like, like I said before, we are the generation past uh, or present uh, that have been uh, recipients that uh, God have made uh, yeah. the promises, promises in the past. Now, before we go any further, I just have, here's a question I, I want to, has God ever made any promises to you? Have God ever made any promise to you that you was able to live to see fulfilled? Has God made any promises to you personally that you able to see fulfilled in your lifetime? Have God ever spoke to you, uh, uh, spoke to you in your present situation or condition or circumstance uh, or your past situation condition or circumstance. Have God, the voice of the Lord spoke to you and told you some things that he will do that shall come to pass. Have you lived to see it? That's the question I'm gonna put out right now. Feel free to share. Yes, uh, when my daughter was applying for multiple colleges and she had a list of which college mm. she wanted to go to and um you know as a single parent at the time you know there was some money saved for college but um not much but i just moved by faith and mm -hmm. just knew that she was going and the whole way going up to penn state university you know when you're going up these rural roads 
you see little images or like, you know, little church houses that have different words. And I say, God, I don't know how this is going to get done, but I'm going by faith and I'm going anyway. And there was one, one caption that said, not by bread alone, but by every word that come out of my mouth. Come on. And God saw her the whole way. I didn't even know that we missed a letter somehow, but she did get a two, a two year ride as an English honor student and God promised. And, and, and he did what he said that he was going to do. I just had the faith and I had to believe in it. And, um, there's a there's more but that one stuck in um more so this morning than so now uh, can you say that she's a graduate she is a microbiologist from penn state university hey, and hallelujah. um undergrad uh social studies yes amen to god be amen you. all right thank you is there another that god made a promise to you uh uh uh, uh, uh that you were able to live to see it come to pass yeah, whatever your circumstance or situation may have been. Yeah, I uh, I was thinking as I was looking at that, uh, this question, I don't want to quench the spirit, uh, but I remember some years ago, I had to be around, I got converted at age 19 and I was working uh, full time on a job in an insurance company. Uh, I was sitting at my desk, probably was around age 20 or so. So that's God's willing, come Thursday, that'd be about 38 years ago. And I was sitting there scratching off Lotto. You remember when Lotto first got started? I was sitting there with my Lotto card and at my desk. And I was, I put, I guess he was marking in the boxes, marking in the boxes. And so I was sitting there and uh, I heard the voice. I, I can't say, Back then, I say, I would say I heard a voice, but now I know it was the voice of the Lord. And the voice said, God's voice said, as I was had my pen and my lotto card, I heard the voice of the Lord say, if you trust me, I'll bless you. Yeah, I, I'm sitting there putting in my lotto number, picking them out. I heard a voice, God's voice say, if you trust me, I'll bless you. Said it the second time. And I stopped. I thought something looked around. I thought it was, a, I'm at work now in my cubicle. And I kept on going as we normally going to do. But the third time, he said, if you trust me, I'll bless you. And I knew it was God's voice then, because I never heard that voice. And I took the lotto card, tore it up. Amen. Don't put your trust in uh, uh, the cares of the world. You know, we all want to be lotto windows, but sometimes, you know, some people never, and I found out, my godfather told me this, uh, some people never knew trouble until they got some money. <laughs> my godfather, Reverend, Reverend, the late Reverend Richard Phillips, he said that to me long, I was a little boy. But, you know, it makes sense. Some people never knew trouble in their lives. until, they, And we think because we get all these millions of dollars and that, you know, now I have to be truthful. Uh, I don't play lotto. I don't play no form of no, number or something. But every now and then, I, I was disobedient, you know, and you hear $500 million or so like that, I'll take $5 or whatever, ten, you know, so throw my hat in there. But that's not I'm, not, I'm not saying that I do that all the time. But as a matter of fact, I haven't really done it lately. And I think about it. But if you trust me, I bless you. And that was the voice of the Lord. And I can say I've lived to see how God has made a way for me. You don't have to be rich. Reverend Monroe, you should, my pastor, you say you don't have to be uh, a millionaire. You you don't have to be rich, or you don't have to be a, a millionaire to live like one. When all your needs are provided, when all and you, God gives you some of your wants and some of your desire, you're blessed. You know. Here's another thing I heard the Lord say, and I'm moving on. I'm talking about promises now, and then you live to see God. On my job, I worked 32 years of New York City Transit, and uh, uh. In 2014, I was considered being considered past the greatest central. And, you know, uh, uh, God showed me my run, my assignment for the last five years on the job. And I'm nearing retirement. And my plan, you have to work the best three out of five years to get a retirement. You know, you build up your retirement. And the Holy Spirit told me on my assignment 
for the last five years, do not work overtime. In other words, they, they called, Greater Central called me to be their pastor. And overtime for the transit authority, oh my goodness, you just you can almost make double your salary on the weekends, working the weekends, double ups at night, and just work yourself crazy if you want to make as much money as you can. Amen. Because you're going to live on your pension. But the Holy Spirit, God told me, do not work overtime. I'm going to take care of you. Amen. And being obedient. Amen. For those five years of my life. Amen. And I'm living now to see uh, I, I, I'm blessed to make as much, if not more than those that was really working, you know, killing themselves. Amen. And I'm just blessed how God, if, if, when God tells you something, you may not uh, live to see it right away. You know, Reverend Monroe told me one time, he said, God had promised him some stuff, some things 30 years prior in his life, but he was able the last few years of his life to live to see the fulfillment of God's promise. So God will keep his promise. Whatever God promised you, uh, it will come to pass. So now this lesson today, when we look at uh, Isaiah 51, uh, I want to make a statement from Isaiah 51, uh, verse 1 through Isaiah 52, verse 12, there are 35 predictions given that remain unfulfilled. When we look at our lesson today, we think it has already come to pass. No, it still could come to pass when it talks about uh, God's people are still to come to pass. Uh, some of the things that uh, in verse uh some unfulfilled predictions that have been unfulfilled uh you can look at in verse number uh uh number three he says the lord will comfort uh he will comfort her he will comfort all her waste places uh he will make her wilderness like eden and her desert like the garden of the lord joy and gladness and thanksgiving and the voice of melody will be found therein in verse number four, the law will proceed from me. I will make judgment to rest for a light of the people. Now, this is in the King James Version writing. And then verse five, my righteousness is near. My salvation is gone for. From my, my arms will judge the people. So there uh, in this uh, lesson today, we're talking about uh, that God uh, uh, it's going to offer deliverance. It was the act of delivering someone or something or liberation, the act of rescuing. And I know what sometimes we think about uh, physical rescue, uh, 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 materialistic uh, deliverance. Uh, but this uh, rescue Christ is talking about what you see in our lesson today is still to come. It's going to come when uh, for God's people. And guess what? We're included in this because we are children of Abraham. When we look at our lesson, uh, it will become in the second millennium, the coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When we see that millennium take place. Amen. So many of us uh, uh, will be sleeping in our grave. Amen. But when Jesus comes, uh, uh, he will bring about uh, uh, God's word. Now, I want us to look at verse number one. I did most of my study through the King James Version, uh, but uh, in our lesson here, it says, listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord, amen, and look to the rock from which you are cut and the quarry from which you were hewn, amen. And so when you look at the King James Version, it says, hawking, hawking, hawking to me, amen. So that's what the word hawking, hawking, means listen to me uh, listen to me listen to me uh god wants uh there were uh three calls to listen in this our lesson uh uh in verse one through two is a call uh to listen to the hawking or a call to the righteous to listen and then in uh and uh, verse number four is a call for Israel to listen, to hearken. We look at verse four, listen to me, my people, hear me, my nation. So it was a call for Israel to hear, listen, hearken. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then the third call is a call to righteous. Uh, it was a call to the righteous, which is verse number seven. 
a call. Hear me, you who know what is right, you my people. So God extends a call uh, for in three for God's people to listen. Uh, and then also, um, I want to point out that it, it calls for them to, to to develop three looks. Amen. That's what the, God wants His people to do: three looks in this lesson. Three looks. Uh, to, to the people of Judah. Look, first of all, to the past. Amen. Because he wants them to reflect on where you come from, as we said in our introduction. Remember, even in our circumstance, we need encouragement. Uh, we have to know that what things look like and what they really are are two different things. I know our circumstance seems to be unpleasant, uneasy, uh, dreary, doubtful. Even in the world we're living in today, isn't it? I don't know. It's, it's it's just a time. If you look at the news, you know, I'm going with the word of God. Now, you can go with who you want to go with. You can believe with what you want to believe in. But I know we live in a society that say gay is all right and gay is the way. It's, that's not the way. LGBT, the world that we live in now, uh, uh, they done made right, wrong, and wrong, right. And so they can go ahead on and celebrate. I'm going to stay with the word of God. Male and female, he created he them. Amen. I'm going to stay with the word of God. Amen. And so, uh, uh, yeah, we love, uh, we may love the sinners, but you don't in incorporate the sin. Amen. Jesus was a friend to sinners. Amen. But you don't compromise to the sin of people. Now, we all have sin and come short, but the times we live in, and then the crime is out of control. Uh, you have wicked politicians. Uh, it's, a, it's a time that we're living in right here in America, right here in our own backyard. And you wonder, Lord, what's going on? As Marvin Gaye would say, what's going on? What, what, when are you going to move, Lord? Amen. When are you going to change things around? Amen. Uh, and I don't know. They say gay pride. I can't take pride in sin. And if you look at the people... <laughs> I just shake your head and, and, you know, it causes you to lament. And then guess what? You say, well, it's not them. No, because that lifestyle has become so contagious from one nation to another, from one people to another, even our own people. Our own family members have accepted that way, that lifestyle. That, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Amen. And they live in a lie, but they want everybody else to accept the lie. Amen. We, there's not enough teaching amen we love the individuals but you don't love the sin that they participate just like whatever sin that you uh, participate in amen or you're dealing with you're struggling with hey but uh god is calling us to righteousness he wants to deliver us out of those lifestyles so look to the past from which you come also i he said i want you to look to the future amen god's going to turn this thing around amen that's why we said earlier, it won't be this way always. Amen. Because of the time that we're living in, I know many of our people have left this world in the last two or three years with a heavy heart, looking at the situation and certain conditions of the world. Amen. And you're looking for a better place. And then it also says, look at the present situation. So we're doing three looks. We look at the past, looking to the future, and looking at our present situation does not look so cherry and does not look so bright. And the children of Israel, specifically the children of Judah, uh, the, the, the chosen uh, uh, people, uh, amen. Because now we're bringing in two things. We're bringing in two groups. We're bringing in, this lesson combines uh, the Abrahamic covenant, amen, which is the agreement, the promise that God made with Abraham, and also uh, uh, unites the Davidic covenant that God made through uh, David and his servant and his line. Amen. That's where Christ comes in. Amen. And so before I go any further, can I get a Bible reader? Uh, Genesis chapter 12. And I want us to look at verses 1 through 12. No, 1 through 3. Genesis chapter 12. Uh, verses 1 through 3. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. Can I get a reader? Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Because I want to show you. Yes, okay. 
Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from the kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Amen. Thank you, sir. So out of Abraham, amen. And we're going to see uh, that's the rock that we were talking about in our lesson today. Out of Abraham and, and through the loins of, of Sarah, who birthed, who gave birth, uh, out of it, these are the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons, sons of the tribe of Israel. And, but th through the promise that God had made or an agreement, a covenant that God had made, with Abraham, amen, uh, is still to be fulfilled. Even when the people of his his seed have backslidden, amen, God still remains faithful to the agreement, the promise that he had made uh, with Abraham. I want us to look at, uh, he says, listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and the quarry from which you were hewn. He was telling the uh, listen to me listen to me listen to me uh that's what he wants us to do and he's talking to uh the righteous and that's the point i wanted to make listen to me you who pursue righteousness and, and who seek the lord amen uh even though you may have a mass number of people everybody is not righteous amen so god is talking specifically to those who love him with all his heart mind soul and strength amen listen to me you and sometimes it's always it's not the mass numbers it's the remnant it's a it's a small group amen of people who heart and mind have totally uh uh been converted and want to live for the lord amen so god is addressing the prophet is addressing to those who heart and mind is still steadfast unmovable Amen. That I'm going to bring deliverance. Amen. I'm going to keep my promise. And two characteristics of the mm -hmm. righteous are uh, they follow after righteousness. Number one, one of the characteristics is they follow after righteousness. And another characteristic of the righteous is that they seek God. They seek the Lord. Amen. They're always seeking God in every circumstance, in every situation. They seek the Lord. Listen to me who pursue. You have to go after this thing. You have to make it uh, you have to be determined uh, that you want to live for Jesus and who seek the Lord. Now, can I get another reader? I love that scripture. One of my favorite scriptures, Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, you want to look at verse 6 and 7. Amen. Those who seek the Lord. Amen. Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 7 and 7. What does that say? Isaiah 55. And I get a reader. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 and 7. Can I get a reader? It might have to be useless, Johnson, this morning. Look like you the reader this morning. Amen. Can you hear me, Pastor? I can hear you, sis. Okay, Robert, before yeah. I didn't get out of mute and I was reading. Um, it says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the upright and the the righteous, unrighteous man, his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. All right. Now, there you go. For those who want to be saved, amen, those are the ones that God who seek the Lord. In order to seek God, as he said in verse seven, you have to forsake, uh, let the wicked forsake his way and unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. Amen. And he will have mercy upon him. Amen. And he will abundantly pardon. Amen. So we're, God knows who we are. So we ought to continually to seek God. Amen. Uh, and God is just so, awesome. that's why they say he is faithful. God is faithful even when we're not. Amen. And so then he says, uh, seek him, pursue after him. Then he says, look to the rock from which you were cut and the quarry from which you were 
uh, hewn. Amen. And look at uh, who is that rock? We all ultimately know that that rock is Christ. Look, that rock is God, the one who created us. Amen. Uh, uh, there's a scripture. Can I get someone, Sister Robinson or Sister Johnson? One of uh, Psalms, chapter six, I mean, verse 61st Psalm is not a chapter. The 61st Psalm, Psalm 61, and verse number two. Amen. We always have to be anchored in that rock. Amen. The psalmist said in 61, in verse number two, what does it say? From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. <laughs> yeah, that's what the psalmist said. Lead me to the rock that is high. Listen, that rock is solid. Uh, that rock is secure. That rock is a foundation. Amen. You have your soul got to be anchored in this rock. Amen. We know this rock to be Jesus. Amen. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. So he says, look to the rock from which you were cut and the query from which you were. In other words, we were created. Amen. From which you were hewn. It was God who made and formed Israel a great people and was able to restore and comfort them and make them a great people again. Amen. So go on back to your uh, maker. Go on back to the one who formed you. Go on back. Amen. Even though you're in your situation, you may be in captivity. Israel, Judah uh, is coming out. Come on, tell somebody I'm not I'm not stuck. Amen. Amen. And I want to tell you something about God and time, even though it was 70 years uh, of captivity. But what is time to God? Amen. What is time to God? Uh, uh, and so and I know being in bondage, but, you know, God was even able to touch the heart of the captives. Amen. After uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the, the, uh, the one who oppressed the king of Babylon or the one that oppressed his children. Amen. I always say you got to be careful how you handle God's children. Uh, uh, but uh, Nebuchadnezzar was brought down. Babylon was cast down. Amen. He, God touched the heart of uh, Cyrus. Amen. A new king of uh, uh, Persia. Amen. Who conquered Babylon. Amen. And then Darius, the Mede came. And a lot of ways for the people of Israel to return, to rebuild, to restore. Amen. God has a plan. So it doesn't happen overnight. Amen. But while you're in your per, per, uh, uh, present condition, no matter how unpleasant it may seem, uh, how difficult it may seem, it doesn't it look like how cloudy it may be. Amen. And you, you it don't see as though there is no hope. Uh, you have to have a, a firm foundation, which is that rock in Christ Jesus, that God made some promises that he will keep. And so, in other words, the prophet here is telling them, first of all, reflect back on the covenant agreement, the promise that God made to your father, which is Abraham. Amen. And we just read in Genesis chapter 12, one through three, that God said, I'm going to bless these people. I'm going to. And there's other, some other scriptures in Genesis that God made promises to Abraham that he's going to uh, bring it to pass. Even the Davidic promise, he said, even uh, to David, when you'll see uh, fall away. And and, and, and and they come entangled in sin. When they look back, when they come back to me, when they uh, 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 when they repent, amen, when they turn away from their wicked ways, I'm going to still be right here to restore them. I'm going to be right there to renew this covenant because I'm faithful even when people are not. And so that's what you said. He told them to look to Abraham, your father, to Sarah, who gave you birth. They came, as we said, it started with Abraham, his wife, sir, but as they gave birth, Sarah gave birth to Isaac, the covenant son, and then Isaac gave birth to uh, Jacob, amen, and Jacob, amen, uh, with his wives and uh, and their, and their uh, handmaidens, gave birth to 12 sons, amen, amen, and they became the 12 tribes. Of, so, and it says, the Lord will surely comfort, verse number three, I'll, I'll jot that down. Uh, the Lord will surely, and this is what you're talking about, uh, God's keeping his promise uh, to, the Lord will comfort Zion. God promises to bless Zion. 
And when they're talking about Zion, we're talking about Judah, the city, the tribe of Judah, the city of David, Jerusalem. Amen. Even though uh, when the Babylonians came in and they made it a wasteland, they ultimately destroyed the temple. They burned the gates of the city. They left it in ruins. They took out the best of the people, took them to Babylon and left the wheat behind. Amen. They left a remnant. Amen. They took all the choice vessels. Amen. And all, all this. And, but God said, even though you're in your circumcision, present circumcision, the Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. Amen. And, and sometimes, brothers and sisters, we get down to nothing. Amen. We get down to nothing. Uh, oh, let, let's go there. Let's go here. Let's go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk. The book of Habakkuk. Now that I'm in this, amen. I, I like that scripture. Chapter three. Yeah. That's it. Chapter three. Verse 17. This is some encouragement. Habakkuk, chapter three. That's one of the books in the we in the new in the my in the uh, Old Old Testament, the Minor Prophets, the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3 and verse 7. I want you to jot that down. I want you to read it. Sister Johnson, are you on the line? Can you read for me? Habakkuk, yes. Yes. chapter 3. Here's a word of encouragement. Verse 17 through 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in thy vines. The labor of the oil shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he <clears throat> will make my feet like hind's feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on my stringed instrument. All right, all right, all right. I heard the preacher, what was the guy preacher's name? I'm looking at him right now. I was up in uh, Buffalo uh, at a convention some year. They went to honor Deacon Bryant. I'm looking at that preacher now. He just retired out of church in Brooklyn some years ago. Amen. But he used that text. When you get down to nothing, God is up to something. Amen. When you get down to nothing, I mean, you in ruins. And listen, your circumstances is dreary, but you a child of the king. He said, though they're... Though, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be on the vine, because they were looking at agriculture back in those days. That was their livelihood. The labor of the olives shall fail, and the, the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the store. Amen. Look at these at verse 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Because why? The Lord is God is my strength. Amen. You have to have a faith. You have to have a trust. In spite of all that you see going through, yet I'm going to trust him. When you get down to nothing, God is up to something. I never forgot that. That must have been about almost 20 years ago now. Yeah, but I but I remember that. And so God promises to bless Zion, the city of David, Jerusalem, all the waste places of all the land ruled by Judah and the Messiah of the house of David will comfort and blossom as a rose like the garden of Eden. Uh, and as we were saying, such of these prophecies are yet to be remain uh, unfulfilled. And it will be fulfilled uh, in the millennium under the Messiah who is Christ. And so uh, when God comes and restore uh, his, uh, his, his earth, amen. And look what it says here. The Lord will surely comfort Zion. And we just read that. What he's going to, he will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her. Thanksgiving, the sound of singing. Uh, uh, my people refers to Judah, all Israel and Judah. Uh, for the 10 tribes kingdom was totally destroyed and taken captive at this time. Uh, God, uh, then it says here, uh, listen to me, my people, hear me, my nation. Instructions will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. 
My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way. Uh, my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait and hope for my, uh, for my, and wait and hope for my arm. Uh, I was trying to find my verse here in verse number six. Christ is uh, second coming will bring about an end to the present. Yeah, that's what he was saying about this restoration uh, that will come, okay? When they talk about his arm, you talking about the arm of the Lord, and that was in verse number five. The arm of the Lord is talking about his God's power, amen. That his power will bring justice to all. And you're talking about the coast, uh, he said here in the coast uh, from different islands, amen. Uh, and really, really we, we said, the islands will look to me and wait and hope for my arm. In other words, he was talking about from one coast to another that God is in control of everything he created and that God is going to bring about ultimate control, bring about uh, uh, this new restoration uh, through Christ Jesus in the, the second coming of our Lord. Amen. Also, Christ's second coming will bring about the end of the present, that this present heaven and the earth, which will vanish like smoke and wear, and wear out like a garment to make way for the new heavens and the new earth. Uh, and so this is what our lesson is saying. He's offering deliverance. He's offering a, a, a way to be made. And it has yet to be fulfilled. But when we say all nations through uh, Abraham, we're part of, uh, we're uh, sons and daughters of Abraham. Amen. Uh, and one thing I wanted to share with you uh, in reference to this new heaven and new earth, what God said, the enemies of God, no matter how powerful they seem, will die like gnats. That's when we're coming down here. Hear me, you who know what is right. You people who have taken my instructions to heart. Do not fear the reproach of mere mortals or be terrified by their insults. For the moth will eat them up like garment, the worm will devour them like wool. But my righteousness will last forever, my salvation through all generations. In other words, he's saying those who make mockery of God's people, the enemies of God, no matter how powerful they may seem, uh, God is saying they will die. They're going to, when, when judgment comes, uh, they're going to be cast away, amen? But my righteousness will last forever and my salvation will be extended to all generations. And then basically he's saying Christ will glory, Christ's glory will be magnified forever and ever. Uh, a world without end. So when Jesus comes in the second coming, uh, you will see uh, everything that was spoken of, amen, uh, and time passed. So of course, we know that uh, God allowed the children of Israel, Judah, particularly to re be returned back to Jerusalem. Another temple was built. Uh, the walls were built up. You know, he sent back Zerubbabel. He allowed Zerubbabel, the first group to go back. Then he allowed Ezra to go back and, and restore and teach the Lord, teach the people. And then he allowed Nehemiah to come and restore the walls of Jerusalem. Amen. Uh, and so the, God did restore people and we need some comfort. I don't know about you in times in which we live. And I just, before we go, uh, there is, uh, what God is able to do. Let's look at Isaiah 61, what God is able to do. Isaiah 61 and look at verses number, I have it right here. One through three and four through seven as, as an, as an example of restoration, uh, deliverance and bring him back uh he's going to bring you out of he brought him out of babylon he delivered them but we're talking about eternal deliverance we're talking about an eternal eternity this is what our lesson is really talking about even though he delivered them then but we still haven't been totally delivered so when jesus christ come uh uh that's when when we as god's children are going to be uh delivered out of this world delivered from our enemy amen eternally you don't have to worry. You don't have to fret because we're going to we're God's people. But uh, even uh, in the form of deliverance, look what he did. God is 
Uh, Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, can I get a reader? In verse one through three, really Amen. one through seven. Read, read one through seven. Amen. Can you hear me, Pastor? Yes, I can hear you, Sister Robinson. <laughs> okay. okay, the spirit of, of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the, un the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the openings of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. It's to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them okay. beauty for ashes and all of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of the heaviness that they may be called trees of righteousness. Mm. The plant of the Lord that he may be glorified. Can you pause that and read that again? What God is going to do to, he, to appoint them that mourn in Zion. Go ahead. To give them unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for what? Mourning. The God Amen. of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Anybody witness about that? Amen. A garment of praise. He's going to exchange some things Amen. for the spirit of heaviness. Amen. And sometimes, you know, like I know, this world and what we go through, our burdens can be so heavy. Amen. But when you trust God, he's going to change some things. Amen. The planting of the Lord. And Amen. He might be glorified. Read on, Sister Robinson, verse 4 through 7. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the ruined cities. The desolations of many generations, strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named, but you shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of, of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, you shall rejoice in your portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double everlasting joy shall be there. <clears throat> Come on now. If you can wait on the Lord and trust him, Ooh. he'll bring you out. Won't he do it? Won't Amen. He? And it was fulfilled through Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm just going to read this in Luke 4. Amen. Luke 4, chapter 4. Verse 18, and when Christ came on the scene, the spirit of the Lord, can I, can I get a reader? We're going to close out on that one. This is Jesus. It should be written in red. When he stood up in the temple, what did Jesus say? Luke chapter 4, verse 18 uh, through 21. Can I get a reader? 18 through 20. Luke chapter four. I'm listening, Sis Johnson. Go ahead. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Sis Johnson, can you pause for a second? Can can you start at verse 17 and then read on down? Okay. Verse 17, yeah. And there were, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And Isaiah. when he, Isaiah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, "The spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives." and recovering of the sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised, to mm -hmm. preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he mm -hmm. gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Verse 21. And he began to say unto them, this is, this day is the scripture fulfilled in all in your ears. 
All right now. So now as Isaiah pointed to Christ, Christ came on the scene, of course, but he stood and he declared while in his 33 year or three year ministry, how, well, during that time frame, everything that uh, God predicted that would come to pass, he said, began to be fulfilled. Amen. And it's yet to still be fulfilled. Amen. So we, God will bring deliverance. Amen. And if you wait on him, amen, he shall bring it to pass. Any other question or comment that you may have on this lesson? God offers deliverance. Amen. Lift your eyes up to the heaven. You got to keep your eyes on God. Keep looking to him. The author and the finish of your faith. I will lift my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. Amen. My help come from the Lord. Any questions or comments or com that you might want to share uh, on our lesson today? Feel free to in part, I know our time will run out. Yes. Good morning. I'm sorry. I enjoyed this Sunday school lesson this morning. I just want to say two things. This is Sister Garland. Life is, is peaceful when you rest on the promise of God. <laughs> Life All is right, so now. You rest on the promise of God. Because God fulfills his promises. Yes. And you know, you Yes, you know, and as you were saying in Isaiah, we have to seek the Lord while he can be found. Mm. And um, God fulfills his promise, and God loves us, and he forgives us. But he is everywhere at the same time. God bless you. And, Thank you, Sister Garland. Yeah. Amen. Is there another before we turn it over? Sister Foreman, are you on the line? You have something you want to add to our lesson today before we turn it over to our superintendent? Uh, no, but it was a great lesson. Uh, the superintendent's not on this morning. I'll okay. be giving the so, remarks. So you can, anybody else before we turn over to Sister Foreman? God bless you. In your hair, in your care. Okay, good okay. morning. We. I was saying that it was. Yes. Come on, Sister Johnson. Can you hear me? She, she muted Johnson. herself. Unmute yourself, Sister Joe. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. I was saying that it was a very good lesson, very historical, but um, it was also synonymous to our lesson um, <clears throat> during Bible study, um, Psalms yes. 89. Yes. And um, it was it was just very interesting how, in, in my reading and hearing, that it was personal to God because he had a, a love for the city of Zion. So he mm -hmm. would always return back to make sure that, you know, that they were delivered and encouraged and installed and restored. So, um, you know, but we all have to just realize that, you know, deliverance starts with obedience first. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we have to continue just to look up to, you know, God's salvation. And it, it, it is a celebratory moment, but obedience is everything. Yes. And, and, you know, this talking about a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. So this world in which we see, trust me, this is not the end. It can't be the end because people can't keep on living like this uh, <laughs> and think that this is it. I don't know. My heart is grieved. And, you know, if I'm grieved, imagine what they said about if you go into Genesis 6, the wickedness of man was so great that it even grieved God to his heart, you know. And you just look around, you, you cause your heart to be heavy, you know, the way how people are living, how they rather do wrong before they do right. And, you know, everybody's first and no, no even mention or worship of God, the creator. I, I, yes. It makes you wonder what's going on, you know? Yeah. Oh, just yeah. forming it in your care. Okay, good morning. Again, um, a great lesson on this morning. It's so good to know that God keeps his promises. You know, he is a he is a promise keeper. And when yeah. he said that he would bring them out, he meant just that. Uh, so we have to um, always remember that no matter what our circumstances is, God once saved, always saved. But yeah. that doesn't mean that um in your disobedience that there are not consequences. Israel found that out, but he also loved us so much and that he promised to, to bring us out. So in order that his word will continue to be fulfilled. And it was, you know, because uh, again, uh, Jesus was a part of that fulfillment. 
you know, through that Davidic line that he promised to David, I mean, that he promised to Abraham that yeah. uh, uh, that uh, he would be the father of many nations. And, um, and through that line, uh, that Davidic line that Jesus was born. Uh, so we thank God for that. We thank God for his saving grace. We thank him yeah. for his mercy, most of all. You know, because he's had mercy on all of us, even in our wrongdoings. Yeah. Um, and so we're grateful for that. Our sister Hill is not on the line this morning. Our superintendent, uh, Pastor, mentioned she um, had death within her family. And she um, let me know last night that uh, she would not be on and she had to be with her family. So we ask that you keep our superintendent in prayer. And um, I believe also Deacon Walters. Um, this week had a procedure, so we continue to lift him up as well. Uh, uh, yeah, he's uh, home. Uh, he made everything worked out well, and he came home on yesterday. He's okay. with his family recuperating. Okay, Good. praise God. Keep for him that. in prayer. Yes. Thank you. And we just want to remind everyone that uh, tomorrow for our worship, 10 a.m., we invite you to come and be a part of the worship in person, remembering that we are still following CDC guidelines, that even though the numbers are, le are leveling out, that the virus is still alive. And yeah. so we ask that when you come, you come wearing your mask for the entire service. We ask that you continue to uh, be in social distancing and um, just to be mindful, uh, we also ask that you not linger at the service, after the benediction. Um, if you want a fellowship, let's do it out on Fifth Avenue. Um, but we ask that you disperse at the, um, the benediction. We also remind you that uh, Bible study is on Tuesday evening. Well, not Bible. Well, yes, the last portion of the book that we're in we will finish on Tuesday evening in Psalms 89 um, that new books are available um, that you can purchase at the church and our Sunday school books for that will begin for September will be available soon I believe the order has already been put in um, and there is a small uh, course to defray just to defray some of the costs of the books uh, that you can get. Uh, we ask that you not forget our Sunday school, that uh, you can give, you know, either through Giblify or you can bring it to the church um, on Sunday or drop it off on, on the church on um, Mondays when uh, the trustees are there. Uh, we, are, um, we are still uh, have course that we have to uh, 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 deal with. So we ask that you not forgive, uh, uh, to be generous in your giving. Um, it's also a reminder that in August, the uh, community outreach will be having their back to school celebration with their book back giveaway. Uh, that will be begin at 12 noon until uh, the books, uh, the, uh, the supplies last. So uh, they're asking for donations. So you can see the list of the different donations that they're asking for. And of course, monetary donations are always welcomed. Uh, we have our daily Bible readings that you can find on Facebook or uh, um, our, our website at www.greatercentralbc.org uh, that you can uh, meditate on the word and be prepared when we come on Saturday mornings for our uh, church school. And also, if you want to have a, a steady, you know, a devotion and Bible reading, you can get those daily readings um, either off of Facebook or off our website. Uh, I believe, oh, and the last thing is that we ask that you continue to support our health walk. Uh, we last, uh, was it last Saturday? Yes, last Saturday. <clears throat> okay, my computer shut off. So uh, I don't know what happened with the computer, but that's technology for you. So we yeah. ask that you continue to uh, support our health walk. Last Saturday, we walked together as a group and we had a great fellowship walking 
around Harlem. We took a short walk last Saturday. Next time we'll do it a little longer and that date will be announced. But the end of phase one is coming up uh, for, um, that will end on June 29th and phase two will begin on June 30th. Uh, and we will, we ask that you go and sign up for phase two. Uh, we, uh, for the app, it will only allow us to do 60 days at a time. That's why we have it in phases. So you can sign up for phase two. Um, and that begins on June 30th, which will also be our pastor's birthday. Uh, he'll be what, 58? on June 30th. And so we just want to keep that in mind as well. Uh, so we, we're grateful again, and we're thankful to all of you that have uh, joined in with us. I don't have the prayer in front of me now because again, my computer went out and I'm on my iPad right now. But we yeah. ask that you, if someone has that open, you can read the prayer for us. Okay. Anyone has the prayer open? Amen. Thank you, Lord, for these reminders that you have always loved and admonished your people. As we leave class now, we ask for wisdom and making the tough decisions that are of us this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, and the thought to remember? Thought to remember says, hear that. God is calling. Okay. Thank you so much. Again. We thank you for joining us on this morning. Pastor, if there's not anything else, we'll close in benediction. Um, let the words in my mouth and the meditation in my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and Amen. my redeemer. Amen. Amen. And God Amen. bless you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.